Hey, good morning and welcome back to Exit 45 Restorations. Uh, so today what we're going to do is uh, we're going to get back, well, we're going to stay on the Thunderbird. Um, and we're going to get in there and get into the firewall area. Uh, I've got some, uh, the brake pedal, the uh, parking brake pedal to go on. i got the fresh air vent to go in. Uh, I've got the heater box, AC box, whatever you want to call it. Um, i got all those that need to go in. And I got uh, the taillights that need to go on now that I have the electrical run uh, all the way back there. So I've got a lot that needs to, to happen here. Let's just get in there and get it going, all right? Okay, so let's take a look at what we got going on here. So I happen to own a uh, brake booster that you can't rebuild. Uh, you have to send it in. Uh, I guess, I think it's just because there's just so few parts left for these. They want uh, to have kind of some control over making sure that they get used wisely, I guess. Uh, with that said, uh, I've pulled this open, so let's see what we got. Uh, this should be my new cylinder. Um, okay, so let's, uh, let's get all this. Oh, look, what do we got here? Brake booster or booster nuts. There you go. I got me some booster nuts. Okay. <laughs> all right. All right. So those of you who'd like to know, this is where I sent it and they did a really good job. I got it back in a very short time, just a few weeks. And, uh, so yeah, it went really good. It wasn't, uh, it wasn't very expensive. It was, uh, there you go. Total of $330 to have it completely rebuilt. Uh, and there were some parts that I had on it that didn't need. I'll get that. All right. We're going to get peanuts everywhere. There it is. There we go. Okay, so here it is. Looks in really good shape. They did a nice job. So, very happy. Yes, looks very good. All right, so... I can't put this on just yet. I just wanted to get it pulled out. I needed to get my um, uh, the rod for the pedal out and all that. So, um, so I got all that and I got my my boot that went here. I didn't need that anymore. They got a new one on there, and just all the hardware still in here. So, yep, I just needed this so that I can. Uh, I'm over here now, so what I'm trying to do is I'm putting the uh, bracket on for the brake booster, but I need to put, I got to go grab the pedal, it has to go on from the inside, and then we got the nuts that'll hold the, this and the brake pedal on the inside together. I'll, we'll go through this as I'm doing it. Uh, and I'll need to put the rod in that goes from, that hooks to the, to right, right here. Okay, that'll, that'll hook right in here, just like that, there you go, you see it right there, just like that, except that'll, ah, it just fell, except that'll go through there to the brake pedal. Uh, so on, it, and we'll get that in on this side, so, all right, well, let me, uh, let me go get the brake pedal assembly, and we'll start getting all this tied together. Okay, so before I put the, the brake assembly up, the brake pedal assembly up in here, uh, I think it'll be easier if I can get these things up in here. So my fresh air vent and my uh, um, e-brake. So let's go ahead and I'm going to just temp install the e-brake for now. And get that in there. And then I'm going to go ahead and work on getting the fresh air vent uh, up in there because... 
I can't remember which way it goes. One of these goes in first and it's a whole lot easier or more, it's more impossible. I don't know which. So I'm just going to temp install this, see if I can get that up in there and then figure out, you know, what needs to be done in what order. So let me, let me start with this. All right, let's see how this goes. started. Okay, there's one. And there's two. Yep, hard to find. But I believe I found it. There we go. I think that's it. Okay. Okay. So we got that in, but loose. And so now we can deal with this fresh air vent, get that loose installed, and see, see where it's gonna be the most difficult to, uh, to deal with this. which way to know. I don't know exactly which way this thing actually faces. I guess I need to figure that out. Alright, let me uh, figure out which way this thing needs to be spun. I guess I just need to line up the screw holes. Well, I still got some of the old butyl on there. Thought I got all that off. <laughs> Guess not. <laughs> all right, so there's a screw hole right here. Is that better? There's a screw hole right there. And I'm actually pretty well lined up, so. All right, so I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna take this back out and I'm gonna get me some Right here on this lip where it seals up there, I'm gonna get me some butyl, some butyl tape on there so we get a, we get a good seal. All right, so uh, this is what I'm using. It's just uh, a butyl, like a butyl caulking, strip caulk that you can just peel off and put around here. So I'll just take this and we'll probably do a few rows of this just to make sure we got a good seal. And it just goes like that. Pretty simple. I use this for like when you put the moisture barrier up in uh, like in your door panels. This stuff works really good for that. Kind of nice to have around. I, I like it. Okay, there you go. See it all the way around. Get it spun. There you go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this put on up there, and then we'll try to secure them both and see see what happens. All right. Let me get it done. Okay, so I went ahead and tightened that down. I think that's the way it needs to go, so we'll, we'll find out though. So that one's in and tight. Now let me get this in and see if I can get to the, the three screws that go around and hold that up there. Well, I'm really having a hard time getting the fresh air vent in after I put the e-brake on. So taking the e-brake back off, put the fresh air in and see if I can get the e-brake on. We'll see if that way works. It's one of the two. We'll see. There you go. So I got the uh, fresh air vent in and tight. 
Now, let's see if I can get the uh, emergency e-brake in there. There you go. Fresh air vents on. And I got the uh, e-brake on. Tight quarters in there. Uh, so the way it worked for me was I was able to get the fresh air vent on first, and then I was able to get to the bolts to tighten up the e-brake. So still got to hook up some of this stuff. No big deal. I'm actually not going to be hooking up the e-cable. I don't plan to use the e-brake, um, but I did want to put the brake itself back in so that if somebody wanted to use it uh, down the road, it's there. Uh, but I do not intend to to hook that up. So anyway. Uh, okay, so we're going to go ahead now and we're going to go ahead to hook up the uh, brake pedal assembly. So let's get that in there. All right, so I'm trying to put the brake pedal assembly in. And one of the problems I'm having is so this is the brackets for the uh, brake boost cylinder. And then there's your, your rod that goes to your pedal. And then this is where the rod will go that goes to your brake boost. But see how that is? It just comes right out. I don't really have any way of holding that in there. So the minute I try to put the brake pedal assembly here, uh, you, can, you can see right here is the brake pedal assembly. It's, I know it's a little confusing in here right now, but there it is. Uh, as soon as I try to slide that on up here, those just push right out the other side and I got to figure out a way to get that other side to stay so I can get those through and get a nut started on them. So as soon as I figure that out, I will let you know. Well, the brake pedal is just being a pain to do by myself. I got some, uh, I got some people coming over this evening, so I'm going to get them to give me a hand with that. But what I'm going to do instead right now is I'm gonna go ahead and get the tail light assemblies all in and see if we can't get all that in and hooked up I'll uh, see if I can throw a battery to it and see if we can't light them up and make sure they work make sure all the harnesses are good so let me get started on that process all right I got both sides in so now let me take it to the next step which should be we're gonna go ahead and get the the assembly in there and get that secured down Okay, so a quick look at these and you can see the, the plug is on this end and we have offset um, brackets here to, to secure it. So if we go up here and take a look, our plug is on that end right there. And then we have mounting places here, here, and here, and here. So the bottoms are the wider and the narrow ones at the top. So looks like that one is setting just like we want it all right let me get that one in and secured and then we'll get the other side okay so i uh, got the new gasket on here and i just used some a uh, little bit of a uh, adhesive sealant to go around and just tack that on there so it stays in place and the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install the, the new tail light and uh, we're using the LED so if you watched uh, a few past episode where I uh, built up the the rear bumper uh, we tested these and got to get a good look at what they look like we will test it one more time because I want to make sure the harness that uh, you know this harness from the other side all the way to into here is good so we'll we'll put power to it one more time but Anyways, this goes on, and then this ring right here will go over this and screw it down, and then the bezel here will go on and trim out the trim out this whole thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this on and then secure it, and then we'll uh we'll just go from there. Okay, so I got it in, and you guys are never gonna believe this, but I got it in and I didn't put the bezel on and cover up where these screws go in <laughs> um so you know normally i like to put stuff on and take it off so 
Anyways, uh, there are four screws. There's one here, 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 and right there. Okay, those go on first, and then the and then that bezel goes on, and then that will fill the center hole on the top and bottom, and the hole on each end. And then you'll have them all in, and we'll do that. So let me get all that on. Okay, one step closer. Trimmed out, looking pretty good. But as always, when you switch from stock stuff to aftermarket, there's always a problem, and there is a problem with this. So uh, the screws that held, that were screwing this on did fine underneath this trim, but the screws here that go to it, they're not long enough um, because this is thicker. So this right here, so right here, you can see what are that thickness right there. They are uh, 832 screws just to hold it. And I got I got one more, but that's all I got. Um, so I'm gonna have to go pick up some more. Okay, there we go. Both sides are in. Okay, and now we're gonna put the uh, the bezel on here. And this is gonna be the same as the bucket we put in back here. We've got the mounting positions right, right, right there and right there. And they're closer together than the ones at the bottom, which are out here and here. And then if we look at this, you can see this side here, they're closer together than that side. They're farther apart. So just gotta make sure you go the right way with it. Otherwise, it's pretty self-explanatory. So let me get those on and I will uh, bring you back in and show you that. All right, there you go. Looks pretty good. So I'm gonna get a, throw a battery in the trunk and I'm gonna tie into the uh, harness and see if I can't get those to light up. And once we get that to light up, I know my harnesses are good inside there. And I can go ahead then and get the, uh, the reverse lights hooked up. Okay, we're gonna light this one up. Let's see, let's make sure our grounds are good and the harness is good. Okay, there's one. And there's the bright. We're good there. All right, we're gonna check this one now. Okay. All right, that one's good. And the bright one's good. All right. We're good. So now we need to go ahead and get uh, these two backup lights installed. So I've got everything I need down here, gaskets and new lenses. Um, so I think I think we're good to go there. Yeah, I got lots of lots of garbage from everything going on. Anyways. All right, so I'm gonna start piecing all this together and I'll bring you in a little bit here and there maybe if, uh, if it's needed. And one more thing to point out, there are two little screws that go on either side and that holds the light assembly together and then you can just put it in. Okay, so <clears throat> we got it all in. So I wanna test uh, the backup lights and the license plate light. Uh, those are the only things I haven't tested in the harness yet uh, After it's all been installed just to make sure you know, I didn't do anything uh, But it's all done. It's all in so let's uh, let's put some power to it. See what we got All right, so we're gonna check that one first Got it I'm going to check the license plate light. Got it. Of course, the running lights come on with it. That's they're all on the same. They're on the same circuit. And let's check. Let's check the other one. All right, we're all good back here, guys. Yeah. Okay. So the back end pretty much is just about wrapped up. 
I've got another harness to route up into the trunk for the light. And I've got, uh, yeah, that's, pretty, that's about it. Not a whole lot more. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty happy with how things have come out so far. So everything's working back here. So again, I do this because when I go to troubleshoot, it eliminates all of this area back here as having any real problem. And all I have to do is look at the harness between here and the front. And that's where my problem will be, but I know it's not back here. So that's why I do it. It just, when I go to troubleshoot this thing, if I have an electrical problem, it's going to eliminate things right off the bat for me. So, okay, now that we got all this, I got to go back up and see if I can't get that uh, brake pedal secured. I did get it installed. I just got to finish it. Uh, my daughter came over last night and, um, uh, we were able, she was able to help me get that all together up there. So I'm headed back over that way now. You want to come? You're more than welcome. If you don't, go get some snacks. I don't know, whatever you want to do. I'll be over there. Come if you don't. Okay, so uh, I know I told you I was headed up to the front to work on the brake pedal, but I forgot about the trunk lid light. And that is right there. Okay. And that wire fishes down through this opening here, comes out here, clips onto the hinges right there, and it plugs in right there. I've got power hooked up to it right now. I just got to put the ground on and let's see. All right, let's see what we got. Oh yeah, look at that. LED bulb, very bright. Okay, got it. <laughs> okay, let me finish the routing on, on that wire. Uh, just get that all set. We know we got a good harness. All right, guys, let's, uh, now let's get to the front of the car. <laughs> okay, so now that I've got the brake pedal assembly in here, installed where it needs to go, I'm now being able to basically do my last final routing and so I've got some of this rearranged a little bit to uh, so that it works better here and now I got to go to that side I got to start getting that all uh, up it's gonna come up and it'll come from right there it'll come across here okay so we've already got that you can see we've got here and now I've got this coming and routing out across there and then down into here and it looks like i've got most of it in the area that it's going so i got my oh sorry got my door plunger here i got my harness going to the door there and fuse box is down in there and everything seems to be going where it's supposed to so this one here breaks out there. That one breaks out there. The only thing I can't do is there seem to be enough slack to get a clamp up in this area. So I'm going to work on that a little bit. Uh, and then I have a little bit of touch up to do to final install the brake pedal. It's, uh, there's a couple of bolts that are missing up there I got to do. Uh, the braces need to be connected. Um, and then once we get there... I think we're going to be pretty well wrapped up in here and I will put the AC unit in here. We'll start that on the next video. I'm just not going to have enough time this week to get to that. Um, but I will have everything ready for it. So, yep, it's starting to look like a car, starting to get cluttered up in here. I kind of liked it before and it was just nice and open. Now everything's getting harder and harder to work on. Yeah, well, that's what it's supposed to be. So, all right, anyways, I just got a little bit of a touch up and I'll bring it in and show you the, the final result when I'm done. There we go. So we got all of our, uh, I don't know what you call them, guides, I guess, for the wires are all in place. All the wires are going where they belong with the exception of uh, this group right here which once the steering column goes in, we'll 
Uh, let's just see, we can't. We'll go above the steering column. Up here like that. Okay, so they'll go, they'll go up like that above the steering column and then they plug into the steering column. And then that one I think plugs into the dash. This one here. Anyway, so we got that in. So pedals installed, uh, except for the rod. I haven't got the rod in yet, but I don't need to do any of that until I get ready to hook up the outside unit there. So anyway, there you go. I got a little bit of, you know, figuring out just a little bit here and there. I don't know where that clamp belongs to, but you know, I got my plungers in, my door harnesses in, uh, all of the harness, you know, like you've seen already and earlier, that's all in and done. And then we go over here, you can see we've got that all secured now, all the way down, and everything is where it belongs on that end. Okay, guys, so I've wrapped up what I'm going to be able to get done this week anyways. So we'll, uh, we're going to call it here. What we'll do um, when we pick back up at the Thunderbird, uh, we're gonna go right into the uh, AC unit where that gets installed um, and start working on that process, getting the last few things underneath the dash here uh, installed. Uh, we'll jump from there to go to the other side of the firewall. We'll get the engine bay, the engine harness, all those things um, so that the, the firewall's done and the engine bay's ready for the engine. Uh, and then we'll jump to the engine. So, but for now, we're gonna jump off of the Thunderbird. And I know you guys don't like that, I, I apologize. But I gotta take my daughter, uh, like I said, um, another another video or something. Uh, she got accepted to uh, Oregon State for the doctorate program there for mathematics. And so I am going to be, on, on the next video, I am going to uh, jump to that where uh, I start prepping uh, my old truck. I'm taking my old 2000 Dodge Ram 1500 with uh, 350,000 miles on it. So I've been going through that, making sure everything's in good working order and all those things. Uh, so I wanna get all that in order. I've done the same thing with her car. And uh, so what I'm gonna do is just, I'll be gone for a couple of weeks making this trip with her and getting her there. So I'll just bring you guys along, show you some things on the way if I, you know, bring it in if I have uh, difficulties with the truck or maybe she has difficulties with her car. Uh, we'll figure all that out. But for the next two or three weeks, I got to be on that trip. So I'll see you guys uh, on the next video. That will be uh, the beginning of the trip or at least the prep for the trip and then getting ready to go. All right. Thanks. Talk to you on the next one.